All right, y'all, welcome back to another SCP video. You know what I'm saying? We got the SCP-173. How does that rhyme? SCP-173. These big animal dolls. Ugly-ish. Um, but we got SCP-173. New revised entry, which means he went back over the paperwork. He got his words together. And, and now we're being repackaged this information. You know, I've been away for SCP for a long time. So, you know what? I think I need a little refresher. Also, I haven't checked out Dr. Bob in a long time. Um, and I remember way back when, when I was going through that Detective Void stuff. And even till this day, I still be commenting like, oh, Detective Void was, he was creative commons, my guy. You know what I'm saying? That just, I just, just see in a, com a comment. You're still going to watch the videos, Jit. So relax. Um, but yeah, Dr. Bob was one of the few people who, you know what I'm saying, was, he was supporting me. You know, so with that being said, we back to Dr. Bob in my heart and in my mind. Top SCP between him or the rubber. I really don't know. They both real good. You know what I'm saying? The rubber is so iconic, but Bob is so gruesome. It's just a lot. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know. Now, I'm not going to make y'all pick because we love them both. But the two goats, the two goats, Michael Jordan, LeBron, respectfully. And yeah, uh, with that being said. We got the, the revised entry, so we finna get into this and see what it's talking about. So I'll see you on the video. She wanna know where I be, she wanna know, yeah. Walking that bitch, cause I know I love my sleep. Walking with slime, yeah. That nigga man, cause she wanna live with me. Show that she mine, yeah. I let her brag, I be fucking this bitch, she show her mind, yeah. Alright. A group of three Class D personnel approach the locked containment chamber. One of them is carrying a bucket and mop. Yeah. But all three of them look. They gotta clean up that dookie booty jumpy and yep. hesitant to move forward. An SCP Foundation guard walking behind them gives one of them a push forward with the barrel of his gun, and they continue stepping towards the cell door. All three of them nervously stare at the heavy locked metal door. Why am I there? Like, why? What, what's going on here? What, you know what I'm saying? Behind it, the sound of stone scraping against the metal can be heard coming from inside. A second guard standing next to the door asks the three if they are ready. They don't answer. And the guard starts to laugh. Ew. They never are. The guard loudly announces that special containment procedures are beginning now. You know the rules. To maintain eye contact at all times while the other cleans. If you have to blink, do it one eye at a time. And announce before you close even one eye so everyone knows. The guard turns and starts to enter a code into the keypad next to the door. Each of the D-classes take a couple hard, last blinks, taking the last opportunity they have to shut both of their eyes at the same time. I don't even know if that's effective, though, to keep blinking. You probably just got to, you know, close your eyes, you know what I'm saying, for one long time, and that's it. Before they begin, with a loud hiss, the sealed chamber door unseals. All right, eyes up, the guard commands. The door opens to reveal a small, dimly lit chamber. There are no furnishings. And much of the metal floor. I ain't gonna lie, I would have walked in there like, oh, oh, oh my! <laughs> I would start blinking, bro. I don't know, bro, because when you tell me not to do something, I want to do it even more. So I would have probably just, you know what I'm saying? Walls are covered in a reddish brown substance, and there in the corner is what they've heard stories and rumors about. The thing that has given them nightmares ever since they learned that they would have to enter its containment chamber, SCP-173. Or as most of the staff in the SCP Foundation call it, the sculpture. It looks so unassuming in person. Just a crude, concrete figure with a stupid-looking spray-painted face, standing motionless in the corner. The three D-classes get another push from the guard behind them, Girl, and they enter jet. the chamber. Don't be touching me! The two assigned to watch SCP-173 assume their position in the middle of the room, their eyes locked on the sculpture, as the other starts cleaning the foul substance off the floor and walls. It smells terrible, like a mix of old blood and human waste. The two assigned to watch 173 pay no attention to the one cleaning, though. They follow protocol to a T, maintaining their vigil and announcing each time they are going to nice, blink, nice, even nice. if it is only one eye. Nice. The third one continues cleaning, trying his best to keep his own eyes locked on the sculpture as he attempts to mop around it without getting too close. D5933 does his job and doesn't break eye contact with SCP-173. Even though it hasn't moved, he can feel the presence of the sculpture, something within it just waiting for him to slip up to let his eyes avert for just one split second what is going on with you why is his eye like what is going on bro everybody been staring just like you why do you look like you've been on five packs of crack like what's going like I, it doesn't they say that's all it takes you stop looking for even an instant and it's all over with all of the fear coursing through his veins it is hard to maintain focus Jim all he can lie. think about Jim is how relax. dry his eyes feel and Jim blinking relax. them one at a time never seems to be enough 
He wants so badly to shut his eyes, to end their itchy, dry feeling. But he can't. Even with another watcher, it's too risky. There's suddenly a loud crack, but D5933 doesn't move his eyes away from 173. He can see in his periphery that the other D-Class dropped his broom and instinctively looked down at it. Luckily for him, there were others watching. D5933 shifts in place, taking a step back and bumps into something. He can't look at what it is, but he reaches behind him and feels that it's the other D-Class watcher. But wait a minute, why is he facing the other way? What are you doing? What's going on? He asks, his eyes never leaving oh SCP-173. What are y'all doing? What are you talking about? The other D-Class asks back. You're facing the wrong way. I'm facing the wrong way. You're facing the wrong way. We're supposed to be watching 173. What are you looking at? I am looking at 173. Wait, what are you what looking at? D5933 doesn't know what's going on. Wait, what's going on? Hold on. I ain't never see these. I've heard this 173 story like it feels like a million times. I've never heard this variation of it. What are they looking at and what is going on? And starts to panic. The one cleaning is focused on his task, trying as hard as he can to quickly mop up an especially dirty corner of the cell. Uh, uh, uh. It's the worst sound D5933 could have heard. Achoo! The <gasps> Are you just fuck? inches behind his head, followed by the sound of bones being cracked, a scream that was cut off too short. And then Is there two? Wait! Thick thud as what? the body dropped to the floor. D5933 doesn't even have a chance to scream before a pair of concrete hands grab his neck and his own head is twisted around to see another identical-looking sculpture staring back at There's him. two? Ladies and gentlemen of the O5 Council. Oh, so this is, oh, this is the storyline where 173 can reproduce? Okay, well, this, yeah, this is the one where they, like, take over the world and stuff like that? Yeah, I know this one. Yeah, yeah, We have a problem. A senior researcher is giving a presentation to a group who remain largely in the shadows, obscuring both their identities oh, as well as their my reactions group? to What's his up, council? horrendous news. There you go, Brenda, uh, SCP you know what I'm saying? SCP-173, through means which we have not yet been able to determine, has multiplied. There's no reaction from any of the 13 figures seated around the large curved table. The researcher in charge of SCP-173 waits for a response, anything at all. But after receiving none, he clears his throat and continues. We gave each of the new instances their own designation, SCP-173-1 and SCP-173-2. Two of the D-Class on observation duty during their regular cleaning of 173's cell were killed. The third was able to keep them both in his line of sight until they could be recontained and moved into separate cells. Again, no reaction from the shadows. But as you know, this wasn't the end of it. At some Yo, point- Yo, what is this fly? Bro, this fly has been terrorizing me for the past five videos, bro. I swear. <laughs> Damn. The instances of SCP-1- It's the spirit of Nagas. Some people get that reference. True COG niggas. <laughs> have been multiplied again, each splitting to form yet another instance. SCP-173-1 through 4 are all contained separately, but we don't know if or when another split will occur. The senior researcher they waits, like but no one on the O5 Council speaks or moves they all 173 until the one key. seated in the very middle slides a piece of paper across the table in front of him. The senior researcher looks confused. He looks to the mobile task force guard stationed near the door, but he too remains expressionless, eyes locked straight ahead. The researcher, unsure of what else to do, steps away from the lectern and walks towards the table. He picks up the piece of paper and reads it. Object class, upgrade from Euclid to Keter. Orders, continue observation. The senior researcher nods in agreement, thanks the O5 Council for their time, and leaves the room. Lights flash and siren blare in the halls of Site-19. It's a containment breach. Facility staff, researchers, and site guards all run down the hall, screaming, trying- Why are y'all running, guards? Hello? Contain them, motherfucker. You know desperately saying? to get away. This is your job. There's no hope for any of them, though. In a flash, SCP-173 instances appear behind them, snapping their necks and dropping them to the floor before or moving maybe, on to the next- Or maybe we can all look at them. We have like 100, 200 people in here. We can at least all- One, two, you know what I'm saying? There must be dozens of them. Even as a guard tries to keep their eyes on one instance, preventing it from moving, another appears behind them. The staff of Site-19 flee for their lives, screaming for someone, anyone, to help them. The senior researcher presses pause on the video. The terrified face of the senior researcher who gave the last presentation is frozen on the screen. An instance of SCP-173 is directly behind them. <laughs> that nigga said, what it do, guys? Like, he having the top of his life snapping his neck. 
he looked like he in love, low key. Its hands wrapped around his neck in a split second. What if all they want is love, 173s, huh? What if they don't, they don't they're not trying to snap your neck, they're just trying to give you a real aggressive hug. And we just too soft. It's possible. You ever see 173, 173 go to another 173? Before his life was snuffed out. The new researcher giving the presentation looks considerably more frazzled than his predecessor. He explains to the O5 Council that following this horrific containment breach at Site-19, at least 61 instances of SCP-173 are now unaccounted for. It is still unknown how they are replicating, but worryingly, there is evidence that the process may be speeding up. He presses play on a new clip from the security footage, which shows what appears to be multiple instances of 173 working in tandem, some using their bodies to block exits, others creating choke points in the facility corridors. We have theorized that SCP- He choked that nigga neck and nuts. Damn. 173, as we are now referring to the collective instances, may possess a form of hive intelligence. It also appears that this intelligence scales with the number of instances that are nearby. This allowed them to implement tactics that thwarted our containment efforts, as they used instances to block our containment teams from being able to pursue others. What you have in front of you is a proposal for revised special containment procedures. What I recommend may sound drastic, but it's what I truly believe is the only way to contain this threat. Each of the O5 council members picks up the folder in front of them, bringing it into the shadows that obscure them. What I propose is that SCP-173 instances no longer be kept in containment cells, but instead placed inside of form-fitting metal containers. We can then use SCP-120 to transport the instances to the Foundation site on the lunar surface. The facility will have to be abandoned, of course. It's too risky to maintain a presence there, but each of the instances will be fitted with a tracking collar to ensure that we will be able to detect if any of them are somehow able to escape. The senior researcher waits. After a time, a paper is once again slid across the table. He approaches and picks it up. He sees that it is the same folder containing the revised special containment procedures proposal. He opens it to find that it has been stamped, approved. Breaking news flashes across the screen. A worried looking reporter appears as though she didn't have time to do her hair or makeup before rushing on air to deliver this special report. She explains that civilian deaths across North America are now estimated to be more than 500,000 people in the last 48 hours, as these still unidentified creatures continue their deadly rampage across the continents. It is unknown how many of them there may be, but the number of sightings has led some to estimate that there may be hundreds if not thousands or even tens of thousands of these living, neck-snapping sculptures. The reporter explains that rumors are circulating that the creature can be stopped by maintaining eye contact with it, but that this has yet to be confirmed. There is still no official word from the White House or from any members of Congress, and their current location and status are unknown, following reports that most of Washington, D.C. was overrun by the creatures earlier that day. <coughs> the reporter suddenly stops speaking, and a terrified look comes over her face. GG, bro. Her eyes locked on something just off screen. Valentine is coming. The camera pans over to show Where's an instance of SCP-173 standing over a dead cameraman. Lonely. There's a scream, and the camera Damn. goes back to the reporter. Oh. Who now lies dead on her desk. But who controlling the camera? Her head twisted 180 degrees before there's another sound of bones breaking and the feed goes dead. A woman in an SCP researcher coat sits at a computer terminal in a secure bunker, a large jeweled medallion around her neck. Personal log of Dr. Bright. That was about From say, the that's little Dr. news Bright. I've been able to gather, it sounds like SCP-173 has besieged and destroyed four Foundation facilities pretty much simultaneously in the last 24 hours. Each instance shows the same strength as the original. And By the way, I'm not streaming. Let me just say this one more time. I'm not streaming. Thousands of them working together are capable of ripping open concrete bunkers and compromising foot-thick steel doors. I alone have been killed 37 times in the last week. They can smell me, somehow, regardless of what body I'm in. The majority decision of the remaining O5s is that this is an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario unfolding, and they're going to deal with the problem, or else the Russians are. They're evacuating this base, which means there won't be a single Foundation scientist anywhere in the New World. They say they're going to try to evacuate the surviving civilians, but I doubt it. There can't be more than a couple hundred people in all of North America anyway. I managed to make it down to a secure bunker, but who knows how long it will be until they're able to get in. I don't think there's any chance I can get out either. I'm running out of food, and I'm not sure which will get me first. Hunger, the sculptures, or what I know the O5s will inevitably do. Dr. Bright closes the computer terminal and sits back in her chair. She looks up at the ceiling of the bunker where the sound of concrete scratching against metal can be heard through the thick walls. 
A sullen and tired looking crazy, researcher bro. steps out of a room that's in the makeshift crazy. foundation site that has been established just outside of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. He's holding a piece of paper and closes the door behind him, which has had O5 Council authorized entry only hastily painted on the outside. A small group of foundation staff are waiting for him. They've gathered to hear what the overseers have decided to do in the face of this world ending disaster. The researcher looks around at his colleagues' faces, and as they make eye contact, any hope they had is quickly replaced by the bad news they know is coming. He begins to read. Revised Special Containment Procedures Containment Zone X1, formerly North and South America, is to be denied access. Following saturation nuclear bombing, the number of SCP-173 instances has been reduced. All available Foundation resources are to be redirected to monitoring the ocean to ensure the integrity of Containment Zone X1. Foundation adjuncts from national navies are to perform around-the-clock patrols and sonar sweeps. Detected instances are to be contained and removed to SCP-120 for transport to the lunar containment site. That's it? One of the staff members asks. That's it, the researcher replies. Several of those present <laughs> begin to cry. There's nothing more they can do. Their homes, their friends, Damn, their bro. families, all of them are gone. Killed either by the neck-wrenching sculptures or in the heat of a nuclear blast. Why? Why did they have to do it? One of the other staff who appears to be a former site guard asks. That's all we could do, another argues. There's much disagreement in the small crowd. No matter how they feel, though, this was the official order from the O5 Council. Their word is law, especially in a world where all law and order outside of the Foundation has broken down. There really was no other option. All they can do now is hope that the sacrifice of two whole continents was enough to keep it contained that SCP-173 is unable to cross the ocean to Europe, and that they remain safe on this side of the planet. This is crazy. The group grows quiet, mourning the loss crazy. of the world they once knew. When the silence is suddenly interrupted by someone running down the hall, it's another researcher carrying his own piece of paper. He tries to push past the group towards the O5 Council's door, insisting that they let him through, that he has important news that can't wait. What is it? demands the group. We deserve to know. The group wrestles the paper away from the junior researcher, and it is passed through the group to the same man who read the revised special containment procedures. He quickly reads the report. It's just a couple of lines, and his face goes white. What is it? What does it say? Comes a question from the crowd. A message from the North Atlantic Navy General Command. Verified sighting of SCP-173 in the United Kingdom. Nuclear bombardment authorized and executed. No survivors. SCP-173 has come for them. I hope you enjoyed this special exploration of the SCP Foundation tale SCP-173 revised entry. If you liked this, then be sure to watch the first SCP SCP-001, the prototype. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more like this, and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. Wow. Yeah, Dr. Bob is definitely Euclid, or, or he's definitely an anomaly. There's no way he just made SCP-173 fold like that. That's crazy! So the whole world is over. Wow. Well, I guess no happy endings in SCP universe. I mean, uh, what, what do you expect, right? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was crazy. Wow. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. If you guys want more SCP, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Make sure y'all go check out my boy, Dr. Bob. If you're not sub, go ahead and sub up. And per usual, make sure y'all stay cozy. And uh, let me know what other SCPs y'all like me to do, bro. Um, we back. And we back. And we back for good. So I'm going to see y'all crazy motherfuckers in the next one, bro. Peace out.